The spine is a very special part of the musculoskeletal system because it's also a neurologic organ. It carries all the nerve tissue that ultimately lands in the arms and the legs. The spine, just like any other joint in the body, goes through arthritic changes. The difference is those arthritic changes can start to compromise the nerves. The spine is essentially a tube and all the nerve, nerve tissue dangles down in that. The arthritic changes in the spine cause that tube to become more narrow. When it gets bad enough, it starts to pinch on those nerves. Frequently, we think about pinch nerves with a patient with a herniated disc, and that can occur in younger or older patients. And it's very focal, and it typically pinches one single nerve. So there'll be a very specific pattern in an arm or a leg and lots of intense pain and a very sudden onset. Spinal stenosis occurs much more gradually. Those arthritic changes of the spine will narrow that tube to a point where multiple nerves are then being pinched more mildly. So the symptoms can be particularly vague. Spinal stenosis in the lumbar spine typically causes the following. Patients will have minimal pain when they are sitting and they will have progressive pain in the back, the hips, the pelvic girdle, or even into the thighs, the longer that they are standing or walking. Patients may say that standing still is worse. They will say that symptoms are frequently relieved by sitting down or leaning on a shopping cart. As they walk, they may start to bend forward from the waist and because the spine is a tube, that tube becomes tighter as they stand upright. And when they lean forward, that tube in the lumbar spine opens up and relaxes a bit. When symptoms get worse, they can start to have numbness or even weakness in the legs. The big problem is it causes patients to spend the majority of their time sitting. So if you or a loved one has pain in the back or hip areas or thighs that seems to be worse with standing and relieved by sitting, those patients should be evaluated by a medical professional. Spinal stenosis is in the lumbar spine is diagnosed with a physician history and a physical exam. We use imaging tests. MRI is most helpful in the lumbar spine but the patient's symptoms don't always correlate with the degree of stenosis of that spinal canal. So patients can have relatively mild stenosis on MRI, but really advanced symptoms and vice versa. You can see a much older patient with high grade stenosis and somewhat minimal symptoms. The reason is because the spinal canal does progressively get narrow as they age and as long as that narrowing occurs very gradually, the patient may stay very functional. Treatments for lumbar spinal stenosis include exercise therapy as the number one treatment, maintaining good posture, working on core strength, and aerobic conditioning to keep the heart and lungs strong are very important. Because symptoms are minimal when people are sitting, Patients tend to adopt a sitting lifestyle and every person needs to be exercising as a component of successful aging. A physical therapist can be very helpful in instructing a patient how to correctly perform these exercises and make them independent with a home program. We also inject medicine into the spine, what's called an epidural steroid injection. They tend to help more than pills, but they also tend to be temporary. A reasonable outcome would be three to six months of good relief after an injection. They can have a few injections each year. If symptoms get bad enough, meaning the patient can't stand or walk for reasonable periods of time, maybe two city blocks, patients having difficulty getting into a store from the parking lot, or especially if the patient develops weakness in the legs, then surgery becomes an option. A main treatment goal for lumbar stenosis is to prevent complications of immobility and to maintain the patient's independence.